Alrighty, well it's about time I get started back on this uh, caterpillar generator set. This is going to be teardown part two. So you can see that I've already got the uh, other cylinder head off. I've cleaned up the bores a little bit. Tried to turn the engine over and, and I was not able to do it, of course. Um, the uh, number three and number four pistons are still stuck. I removed the uh, rod bearings, lower rod cap bearings from those two uh, connecting rods. So I was still unable to turn the crank um, and discovered some unfortunate, uh, I guess, rusting up in the gear uh, train. So let me show you that. Alright, so here's number three and four cylinder. I've uh, cleaned the loose corrosion out of them. You see that big crater in the top of the piston? That's actually uh, from corrosion. That's really interesting. Deep, it's about three-eighths of an inch deep on the number four bore. You can see the pitting. Let me zoom in a little bit here. You can see the pitting on the cylinder walls. It's not as bad as I thought it was, or was going to be. I mean, it's not good, by any means. And the pitting on the crown of the piston. So that's the number four cylinder. First one I took the head off of. This is the number three. The number three cylinder is in much better condition than the fourth. The number three from at this point looks like it could be reused. Now I don't know what what the sleeve looks like down around the piston. It could be heavily corroded down there. But at least the upper surface here doesn't look that bad, all things considered. The crown of the piston is also not anywhere near as badly pitted. Oops, sorry. And of course number two and number one are just fine. Now, like I said, I was not able to get any of these pistons, these two pistons to budge going down. So what I wanted to do was um, I pulled the lower rod caps and I was going to swing the crankshaft out of the way so that I could get something underneath the connecting rods, maybe a small porta power jack and push the pistons up, try going up a little bit. And uh, I was not able to rotate the crank even with the rod caps off. So I did a little bit of um, searching around, a little bit of thinking on what could be holding it up. And uh, luckily there's an inspection cover here over the water pump. And you can see within there, I hope you can, the gear train is rusted up pretty bad. See uh, pitting on the drive uh, gear for the water pump. So, timing cover's got to come off. Hopefully, the dam you know the, the the damage the rusting is localized in this area to the water pump idler gear, which is this one, and then the actual water pump drive gear. Uh, I don't know. We won't know until we get it all apart. So today we're gonna pull the radiator and pull the front cover. All right. I'm gonna fabricate up some uh, lifting brackets to hoist this radiator out of the way. There's a nice four, four bolt pattern here and one on the other side. I'll just uh, make a piece of plate steel with an eye in the top for a shackle and should be able to lift this radiator out no problem. Alright. Alright, we're back. <clears throat> I got the uh, fan guard removed and uh, made myself two uh, lifting eyes here. One on each side, they're just quarter inch by three, eighth, uh, three inch plate. Um, the radiator is actually loose right now. I took off the eight bolts from the bottom down here. 
So I'm gonna set you guys on the tripod. Go ahead and uh, lift this thing off. Alrighty. Also, before anybody says anything, I know the chain hoist is not supposed to freewheel like that. That's a Chinese chain hoist, I'm ashamed to say. And uh, after about a year, the uh, little friction brake in there pretty much gave out. So, just got to be careful using it. I plan to replace it, so lay off me on that for now. My little uh, lifting brackets did just fine. There was a little bit of deflection uh, when it had the full weight of the radiator, but it's to be expected, so I did well. I got the radiator just sitting on pieces of wood right now. It's supported by the hoist, so it's not going to fall over. So, let's take a look here. Yeah, well, first, this side of the radiator doesn't look too bad. It looks like it's had some little, uh, little oopsies in the past but the, the, it was full of water the, the the engine was full of water when I got it so it wasn't leaking now once I run it and it gets up to temperature we'll see what it does but it looks okay for now fans fine alrighty Jesus that gear is kind of strange. I wonder what the purpose of that was, or is. Hmm. Yeah, so, fan's got to come off, fan hub, crank pulley. I'm going to have to 
block up the engine from the oil pan when I remove the front mount here in order to pull the timing cover. So I've got another inspection plate here. I'm going to go ahead and pull this plate off first. I'll loosen the fan so I can move it out of the way. Pull that plate off and uh, see what it looks like under there. That's going to be the camshaft right there and the governor. So the governor arm will run through here and uh, be housed in there. So I'm really curious. Let's take a look. All right, now with the ra with the radiator and the fan and the fan hub gone, you can a little bit more easily see what I'm working with here. I pulled the cover off this. This is the bearing for the water pump idler gear. So you got a gear right here behind my hand, which is the idler gear. You got the water pump gear here, camshaft gear right here, the crankshaft gear, and then over back behind here, driven off of. Uh, another gear on the same shaft as the camshaft. Uh, you got the large gear and then a small gear which drives the injection pump. So taking a look in here, you can see the governor spool in there, which is this piece acting on this lever arm here, rotating that in and out, which rotates the other lever which pulls on the rack for the injection pump. I don't know if you can see, but there's the governor weights in there. There's one weight right there. I don't know why it's so far falling forward, if it's supposed to be like that or not, but we're going to find out. So, next step is to pull off this uh, crankshaft pulley and then block up the oil pan from down below. Cast iron oil pan will hold the weight. That's actually you know, following the Caterpillar service manual, that's the procedure. Block it up and set the engine right on the oil pan. Um, they also, uh, one part of the procedure for removal of this cover is to remove all the oil pan bolts, or most all of them, and actually place shims between the oil pan and the block, shim it up a little bit, uh, to help the front cover clear the two dowel pins. There's one here and there's one on the other side just to allow a gap here so you can slide the cover off. I'm going to see if I can get the cover off without doing that. Just got to remove the lower bolts for the front cover. And uh, I think that, I don't know, we'll have to see how thick that gasket is. I might be able to just slide that cover off. If it destroys the lower gasket, not that big of a deal. I can reseal that up without too much difficulty, but I don't want to, well, I, I prefer not to have to pull all the oil pan bolts. So. Let me get to it. Okay, well I've got the front pulley and the hub off of the crankshaft here. Um, it's pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, first pulley comes off, and the center bolt in here is actually a left-hand thread. You pop that out. Then this large nut here, hollow nut. Um, somebody's been working on this in the past. Big pipe wrench gouges all over it. And the uh, the th threads galled pretty badly on the way out. So that's kind of a problem. Now the threads inside the crankshaft don't look that bad really. I could probably I could run a tap through there, clean them up and they'd be fine. This here, I'm already thinking that I could weld that, the whole thing, just build it up with weld and then chuck this in the lathe and if I get it, see this is a machine surface here, if I get the indicator on it straight so it's not wobbling, I could recut those threads after I built it up. So we'll do that repair, you'll definitely see that. And then last is the hub, the pulley hub itself. I don't know what this gear is for, some application other than what this engine is being used for, wasn't used. It's a tapered fit on the crankshaft and to my surprise, um, with just a small puller, um, it, it pretty much hopped right off the shaft. Um, now, of course there's some rust on the taper there so it wasn't seating 
uh, as effectively as, that, as it could be, so that probably helped me out a lot. Um, speaking of pullers, yeah, I just used this little puller here, this little three jaw, and I really like these Posilock uh, pullers. Probably the best three jaw puller I, you know, you can buy in in the sizes that are available. So, all right. So the next step is um, either pull the water pump off or block the oil pan up, lift the engine a tad, and well, first on both the front engine mount here, lift it up, pull the front engine mount right off, pull the water pump, and then we're ready to lift the front cover. So, stand by. Alright, the uh, front engine mount has been removed. The engine's now sitting up on blocks underneath there. It's bracing up the oil pan. Taking that mount off was uh, no easy task. Between lifting the engine up and getting the blocks under there and getting the mount off itself was a little bit difficult. I tried to pull the water pump first. Put a little gap here. Remove the bolts from the plate here. Remove the uh, one of the uh, the bypass pipe and unbolted the uh, return, well this is actually the bypass right here but anyway I can't get the water pump to work its way out it, it does wiggle back and forth a bit but the I cannot bring this plate out here which is the bearing support for the gear for the shaft out any further I don't know if it's because I, I can't rotate the gear because uh, the rust is all intermingled, but I should be able to take the cover off with the pump intact and on it without too much difficulty. Before lifting the engine, well this end of the engine up a little bit to get the blocks underneath, I loosen these three nuts here and the three on the opposite side to allow the uh, just a little bit of movement so that the engine could tilt up a little bit. I also pulled the cover off for the coupling for the generator. I wasn't sure what what type of coupling was used and it ends up it's this flexible material, this uh, I don't know what you call it, almost belting. It's like a um, fabric uh, rubberized belting, almost like a conveyor belt type material. And I uh, figured that would allow me enough flex that I, so that when I tilted the engine forward I wasn't putting a lot of um, strain on the uh, generator shaft and on the bearing. So I only had to raise the generator about uh, less than a quarter an inch, maybe about an eighth of an inch at the front so that I could work the um, uh, front motor mount off. So. It, you know, back here, maybe it might have tilted, I don't know, a half a degree or so. So that, that coupling will take it without a problem. If that doesn't look like something out of the 1930s, I don't know what does. Looks like it's got, got a little issue going on here. Big chunk of that uh, fabric's missing down there. See it? can see the pin versus up here. You cannot. Just starting to de deteriorate. It'd probably be okay to run just for show purposes. But I wouldn't want to carry a heavy load with it. Don't want to damage that generator. Alrighty. Let's see about getting that front cover off. Okay, this may look a little awkward because there's really not a good easy way to, well, that I found to, to, to strap this front cover to lift it up. It's kind of going through an inspection plate then around the water pump, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and lift it off and try to lay it down on the trailer right in front of the generator, right in front of the generator base. So hang on.
it's free and it's just kind of floating there at the moment. So let's see. Move the gantry a little bit. Actually hanging pretty level. I'm surprised. All right. That should do. We got. Oh, you, I really couldn't even see any of that. Alrighty. Getting sick of hopping up on this trailer. <sighs> Alright, so. Hmm. There's your governor. Crank gear, cam. Other side of the cam, your cam gear driving the injection pump. Hmm. Where's my little pick at? I'm not too concerned about, about, about where the rust chips go because at this point everything's got to get cleaned, so it's not really all that big of a deal, is it? Should clean up. They're not going to be perfect, that's for sure. Whew. Interesting thing I noticed when I first cracked the cover open is. Let me get the pick. 
Look at the injection pump gear. Look at the old pitting. There and there. It's almost like this engine's had a long history of rusting up these gears, getting surface rust on these gears, only to be ran again. That's interesting. I imagine this is just rust from condensation, even. Condensation within the engine being not being used very much. This engine never had, didn't have a block heater. It sat in a mostly, for the most part, unheated building. Other than the fact that there was a, 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 a boiler, essentially, next to it feeding the main building, uh, the main part of the uh, dairy processing plant. Really the shop that this was in was not heated so and not insulated either so I imagine maybe there were some temperature swings you know, like we have out in my area. I have problems with uh, it, you know it'll be 40 degrees one day and then the next day it'll be 70 and rainy and all that humid air likes to condense on everything. I have the, the hardest time keeping the ways on the lathe and the bed of the milling machine rust free. I've got to coat them, you know, every other day pretty much in certain seasons. Anyway, I'm rambling. Uh, look here. There's the idler gear. That's locked up. Here's my pickaxe. I keep losing stuff. Ugh. Hmm. Really something. Look at that. Same tooth. Sludgy and oily there. Rusty. I tell you. I work in the generator industry. Standby power generation. Commercial stuff. Heavy duty generators. You know, and if there was ever a a picture of a generator showed to a customer with what happens if your unit's either not being exercised regularly or not on the block heater, this is it right here. I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm gonna start rambling again, but I was at a job yesterday, or sorry, two days ago. I look up, it was a caterpillar generator actually. And the ring cap stuck open. This is a brand new, brand new customer. My first time on site. The customer standing right next to me, and I said, "Well, you know what? We gotta, we gotta get that ring cap replaced. It's all, the pivot pin's all worn. And it's stuck open." And he's like, "Ah, it's not that big of a deal, is it?" I'm like, why don't you check out this video I have of this caterpillar generator with two rusted up cylinders because the damn ring cap stuck open? Then you'll see. How important it is. All right, hang on. All right, now I've been curious as heck to see if pulling that cover off and getting that rusted up water pump gear and idler gear off will let me spin this crankshaft. I'm about to find out. like it's moving. I'm just going to move it a little bit. Yep. Good enough for me. Let me get out of here. I know you guys can see it. See them gears moving. That's damn fine. Now, remember I've got the two stuck cylinders disconnected of course and I was turning the crankshaft in the direction away from the connecting rods. So now I can rotate the crankshaft. That means that I'm going to be able to get a, a port of power or a jack up underneath of these two cylinders here. And try to push the pistons up and out in the direction they should go. And hear a loud bang in a minute while I take this cover off. Well, maybe not. 
Let me zoom out. bearing shell wants to come out of there. See, I got the cap off of that one. So it's definitely moved. So now I'll swing the crank down, block it up on the crank, I'm thinking. Get one of those little, like, two-inch porta power jacks. Stick it under there and put a little bit of direct upward force on the uh, pistons. But heck, at this point, now that I can rotate the crank, I might as well just put a piece of block of wood up in there on top of that piston there give it a couple whacks with a hammer and see if I can drive it down even if it's only a couple thousands just so I can move it and then I might be able to bar the engine bar the crankshaft and push the pistons back up up and out now that I can actually move the crank and it's not being bound up by those gears that's good so the news is is bad but it's also good. Crank rotates, gears, uh, it's a big old caterpillar, I'm sure it'll be fine. Clean those gears up. Once I, uh, once I dress those teeth up, it may whine a little bit, but uh, it's not going to be any worse for the wear, I think, considering what it looks like this engine's been through in the past with as, as far as rusting on these gears go. I think it's gonna survive. So, thanks for watching, everybody. This is the end of the video. This is the end of part two, and uh, I'll keep you updated.